Hey, it's Scribble Kibble, the show where I eat dog food in front of a live audience. I mean, talk about animation. Those two things are pretty much the same, right? Animation, dog food. Oh, I got them confused. Okay. Right now, I'm obsessed with Studio Killer's animated music videos. So this week's video is Ode to the Bouncer, a mix of 2D and 3D animation. Note that this video is very suggestive, so if suggestive things scare you, maybe come back next week. I mean, come on, give me a break. The song is, after all, about getting physical with the bouncer. Gotta love that double entendre. Either I'll beat you up or I'll be your lover. And the animation does a fantastic job of playing out both meanings. Sexy dancing versus flexing muscles. Riding the bouncer versus strangling him. I'm especially a fan of everything dripping and melting. Everything. It really makes the piece sensual. Plus, oh hey, look! Symbolism! The runny makeup is the female character Cherry's trademark. Overall, her design is so imperfect compared to the usual standards of beauty. It's borderline ugly, or beautiful ugly, the phrase goes. I can't help but be fascinated by Cherry and her quirky body type, her fashion and color choices. Whoever writes her character must know something about fashion, because her outfits are always right up on the edge, like the clothes you'll see if you Google runway fashion. I mean, look at this. Each eye with different colored eyeshadow, a mint green frock with black lace boots, and a widow's weeds hat? I would never wear this to a club, it's hideous! It's hideous and I can't look away! Is it ugly or sexy? I can't tell anymore, I'm so confused. Just look at the skin that's applied to this 3D model. The freckled blemishes around the eyes, the lines that define the nose, mouth, and eyes, the texture that makes the bangs look like a 2D paint stroke, and the pupils that look like 2D cell shading, and the shiny lipstick. It's so good! I'm bored of seeing plastic skin 3D models with just flat colors and no texture to them. Look! Cherry even has knee blemishes! Knee blemishes, people! Knee blemishes! So, yes, great character design and 3D rigging. Five stars, A+, plus, a million marshmallows, 17 bowls of scribbles. The studio killers attribute all of their art to their fictional character, Cherry, so we really don't know who the animator for their videos is, or if there are several animators or what. Do I believe that there's only one artist? Sure, I'll buy it. I can see all of these art styles being made by one skilled person. It certainly takes them long enough to make a music video that a single magical mystery animator could be the case. Studio Killer's animations always mix animation types and techniques together. In Ode to the Bouncer, there's the 3D element, a traditional frame-by-frame -frame 2D element in the bouncer and these disembodied dancing body parts, and a puppet 2D element in Goldie Fox and Dynamink, the animal characters here. Which, by the way, I love these puppets, they're so cool! It looks like the character pieces were drawn on paper, cut out, pinned together, and then animated. Obviously, that's not how it was done, but it still looks like pencil on paper. The characters are drawn in a raster program like Psy or Photoshop, and then animated in a video editing program. Something with a warp or puppet pin tool, which is what lets you pull a still image like these ears to make them bounce. The ears are not redrawn, just distorted. After Effects can do this pretty easily. I am really curious about how they made Cherry and the Bouncer interact without the two styles getting mixed together. What I would expect to see is fuzziness or flickering around Cherry because of the animator erasing the traditional drawing around her on every frame. Instead, it's perfectly smooth. So I've got two theories about how these mixed shots are put together. One, that the 2D animated bouncer is actually 3D. You can make a 3D animation look 2D. Or theory two, which is just good layer planning. In the initial render, Cherry might have been interacting with the 3D placeholder, and then the animator went through and animated the bouncer on top of that. And then they deleted the placeholder, and Cherry would be on a separate layer from the bouncer. So here, Cherry is actually on top of nothing, and the layer underneath her is the animated bouncer's body. Though if layer planning is the case, I don't know how you would accomplish something like this, where the V of his coat is below her hands but above her legs. Could you export parts of Cherry's 3D model independently from each other? Like, could her arms be on another layer? I don't think that's how it works, but I haven't made a 3D animation myself, 
So maybe someone in the comments who has experience with 3D animation and 2D animation can figure out the mystery behind this shot. How would you put this shot together? I mean, come on, give me a break. Today's traditional art doodle is brought to you by Hybrid Shadow on Instagram. In the digital category, this art by Lonely Midnight Cat is nice and fluffy with heart marks for whisker spots. Is there a name for that? The place where the whisker meets the face? Whisker spots? Whisker freckles? Ah, uh, let's do more fluffy wolves. Here's me by Burnt Brownies. Looking saucy there, looking to the upper left. Hmm, what am I, what am I looking at? I must be looking to the corner of this 169 aspect box I live in, into the void, into the infinite blackness you can't see, but it's there. What really lies beyond the bounding box? Is it nothing? Or is something there? Some expansive paradise just outside my point of view, waiting to be discovered. Thank you.